Matt with Warrior Combat Academy. And in this video, we're going to be explaining what the vulnerable striking areas are. And to help me with that, we have our good friend Bob. Okay? Bob shows up to practice every day. Bob can take a hit. He can't really give one, but uh, he's, a, he's a good guy to have around, good sparring partner. So the first vulnerable striking areas we're going to talk about are going to be the jawline, the temple, and the equilibrium. The first vulnerable striking area that we're going to be talking about is the jawline, okay? When you hit somebody in the jaw, it acts as a lever to whiplash the head, okay? When the head gets whiplashed, the brain will slosh to both sides, usually then causing a knockout, okay? So there's no nerve, there's no magic night-night button thing about it. The jaw just acts as a lever to whiplash the head, okay? The next vulnerable area we're going to talk about is the temple. The temple, again, is in a good spot to knock the head and whiplash it one way, um, but it's also the spot where, when you were a baby, all of the bones in your head came together to connect, okay? So it's kind of a, a weaker spot that will allow force to transfer outside of your skull to the inside of your skull. The next one we're gonna talk about is the equilibrium, okay? The equilibrium is inside your ear, and oftentimes, these won't knock people completely out, but these are the, the strikes that you see when they land and somebody's dancing around all goofy because they can't find their balance and then they usually get knocked out because they're not in the ready position, all right? Their hands are out of position and then they get hit in the jaw and knocked out, okay? Um, the equilibrium is, picture like a little seashell full of water inside your ear, okay? And inside that seashell, there's all these little hairs sticking up. And so when the water moves, it moves those hairs. And now based on those hairs, your brain tells you which way is up, which way is down, and left and right, and all of that good stuff. That's why when you spin around for a while and you get dizzy, it's because those hairs are all confused and the water gets sloshed around inside your ear, okay? Might not actually be water, but some sort of liquid, okay? Um, so the equilibrium, the, the best place to hit is usually gonna be right on the ear or right behind the ear, okay? Uh, and those are the, the vulnerable striking areas to cause a knockout on the head. So the next section we're gonna be talking about is the midsection, okay? And so with our buddy Bob here, we're gonna talk about the uh, different vulnerable areas on the body. So if I'm throwing a strike with my left hand or left foot, left shin, whatever, okay? I'm going to be attacking Bob's liver, okay? Your liver is essentially like a, it's kind of like a big filter that your body has to capture all the toxins and beer and whatever else you put in it, and it captures that. And it's also a very big, important organ. And so when this organ, this liver gets hit with a liver shot or a knee or a kick, anything like so that, the toxins inside that, some of those are going to get released, as well as the liver is going to start nervously contracting and since your body wants to protect that organ there's no choice in the matter you're gonna fall into the fetal position and you're gonna try to protect that organ okay so the liver is on the right side of you it's on the left side if you're looking at your opponent to hit them okay so a lot of people to dispel that myth as well a lot of people think that people choose to get knocked out when they lay down after a body shot or things like that. It has nothing to do with choice. Your automatic nervous system kicks in, your body wants to protect those organs, and you will fall to the floor. Okay. The next area we're going to talk about is on our right side looking at our opponent, but on your body, it's going to be on your left side. Okay. And it's slightly smaller, it's about the size of your fist, and that's your spleen, okay? Your spleen is like a, a blood reservoir, okay? And when you hit it, it's kind of gonna do the same thing as the liver. It's oftentimes a little bit harder to hit though because it's small, like I said, only about the size of your fist, versus whereas the liver is going to be like almost the size of both of your hands, okay? There's also a little section right here, I'm sure, Everybody's kind of been hit there before. It's called the solar plex, right where, right where the ribs separate, okay? What this is, is this is actually just an extension of the liver that is not protected by bone, okay? So this is oftentimes where you'll see an uppercut or a knee or something like that drop somebody. You're not attacking the stomach. 
you're really just hitting another piece of the liver um, that has a lot of very sensitive nerves around it to protect it since it doesn't have bone in front of it. And that's the solar plex. The last vulnerable striking area we're gonna talk about is the leg, okay? This is a, a big, meaty, obviously not my chicken legs, but it's a big, meaty spot um, to attack. And when you attack this leg over and over and over, all right, it's going to limit your partner's mobility. They might start limping. They're not gonna be able to defend and run away as well when you attack them. And they're also not gonna be able to move in on you with attacks if they're limping on their leg, okay? So the spot to aim for is this insertion right here, okay, where it starts to make this bend, all right? You don't wanna go too far up on the thigh and you don't wanna go down right at the bone. You wanna be attacking this section of the meat right here where the, where the muscle actually inserts and connects to the bone, all right? Because that's the easiest spot to cause damage and get your opponent's mobility to deteriorate. So those are the basic vulnerable striking areas for MMA. Thank you.